Hello fam, so I kind of wanted to stop doing videos for tonight and got to show the family, but sadly there was at least this video that I thought should be worth noting. Uh, I just received uh, the link to this, so I thought you guys might want to know, and I'm going to be putting the link in the description, but I'm guessing over time it's going to appear much more on the forum too. So as a lot of you knew when they were going to extend uh, the league period waiting time, we all kind of knew that this was happening. So this is the third year update. It also has a really weird name, who they kind of said at the end, but I'll talk about that later because it does have an implication based on the notes. So let's start talking about what matters. So they're saying there's going to be Gibral and Press EE. We kind of knew they were coming. They give no info whatsoever at what they are, so I'm still not going to DM by them because, well, I like to know what they are. Now, Galaxy Super League, this is where a few things are going to change. Some part are going to piss us off and some part are not. So they've invented a special league for the top 30. So, yeah, I, I, I can guess the names of the people who are going to be there. They're also the top 30 in COD usually. So, well done, BB. You've created a system that excludes basically everyone. But, hey, keep it up. Uh, they did make one cool thing, I'm going to say, around our name. We're going to have the borders. Uh, when you look people up, I mean, it doesn't make a big difference after they kind of stole the player borders who we kind of gave a shit about a while back. But this this is kind of cool. I mean, I guess everyone I know is going to be with this one, so it's going to be the most common thing ever. But for the people who don't all have this, it, it will be decent. And yeah, Enox, Rolf, we know you'll have this one. I'm, I'm thinking about you guys. Um, now, the one part that I got to say who is really not cool is this part right here. Users that have climbed up to diamond or above will start to lose score points if there are no tournament activity for a certain amount of time. Now, hopefully, we'll get more information on what this amount of time is. But this does mean that if uh, near the end of the season, for some reason, you're not able to play, you could actually go down a league and end up getting the reward of the previous league. And these are based on the final league you reach at that season, who's really not cool, I got to say, you know, but uh, hopefully something will be improved here. Um, now, we got an even bigger problem, is the Transcendence power-up improvement. They're basically saying the thought they had originally, and instead they've decided to completely break the shit out of it. So, conclusion is, you can still use the same player for the Transcendence power-up, at least it sounds so. But they're saying, since it's an end-game content, let's allow pay-to-win players to pay even more, to win even more. And, uh, well, that's pretty much what they did. The concept is, you can throw away five-star players... And you can train them into these kind of like Final Fantasy costume cats, I'm guessing, um, called uh, Master Yomu and Grandmaster Yomu. So you need three Master Yomu to transcend power up a five star, one Grandmaster Yomu to power up a six star. So this finally means that the end gamers can max transcend all their legends with ease, who, well, is, is going to be a nightmare because I don't have that many extra five stars on retainer, who's going to be a real nightmare. Uh, also, you can power up um, a Master Yomu into a uh, Grandmaster Yomu in count seven. I do want to point out that from the sounds of it, one five star is one f Master Yomu. So that means three five star cards have to be sacrificed to get one transcend power up on a five star. This already sounds expensive. And when you tell me seven cards, I mean, that's the equivalent of making a six star and a six star included. So, I mean, seven stars. So that, that's, yeah, really, really bad in my opinion. Um, players know that you will grant subject to player one transcend power-up. It's not completely clear how much is the cap going to be. Is it still going to be 30 or if that's going to be changed? Uh, they're changing it to amplified power-up. I mean, what the hell do we care about the name? Uh, it's now an endgame content. No shit. If I got to sacrifice seven cards and I got to do that 30 times 70. Actually, no, that's... 190 cards. I, I like to point out since I've started playing the game, I'm around 505 stars I'm drawn, and that's in a year and a half. That means I can, like, two legends. I run seven, by the way, but hey, why not? Uh, new Unique Spirit Zone. That, that actually I'm, I'm happy about. That's, that's a good idea. Uh, the names are, like, super unclear on what they do. I don't, I don't really know, but they do sound cool. I'm guessing Heart of Minerva is going to be some sort of survival unique. Resident of Madness, some offensive unique, you know, maybe make Ravi good again. We don't know. I know someone in my club really hopes for that. So, I mean, the art on the stones look even better than some of the old ones. So, I'm, I got to say, I'm actually impressed about this part, though. Hopefully, they'll be good. They're saying they're going to change uh, the way the unique stones look like and the, the menu part. Hopefully, this will actually be decent. So, this, this is something I'm happy about. This, I'm also extremely happy about. 
a Colosseum of Despair, uh, people are now going to get uh, Extreme Evolution, and the Colosseum of Despair will be renewed based on the current meta, so get ready to cry because you're going to meet some new legend and new shit, but for people like me who've been doing it over and over and got to this really stale point, this is something great. Uh, I'm also really hoping that this is going to be followed up by a COT revamp because certain stages nowadays, after the changes to Shu for 5.6, for example, have become extremely frustrating. And I'd like to have some new challenges, things of some new comp. And I mean, if they decide to add an extra 10 stages to COT, I wouldn't be complaining. Make some small rewards for us. We're not going to be sad. Now, this is also some interesting information. Uh, I'm guessing some mistakes were done in translation because they're not super clear. Um, they're basically saying they're going to be buffing attackers. So they're going to increase their, their counterattack resistance when penetration to 30%, so a 15% increase. I mean, that's good. But overall damage reflection, is, is, it, is that DR? I, I'm not 100% I'm not clear uh, which is currently unified around all classes. will be readjusted about different classes. So that might mean that the classes, uh, you know in the top part when you, you see the class of the player and they have certain small buffs, there might be some DR coming into some of them. and Negative DR, I guess? I don't know. They're going to be playing with that. I mean, more DR can hurt, and I got to agree, some units really need it. I'm thinking of my poor old friend Malcolm. I mean, he's an attacker, and I think I put two DR stones on him. He does good work, though. Well, I don't use him in my main team anymore, but yeah, that's kind of why. He needed too much stones to survive. Uh, change direction of skin creation. Okay. In previous developer note, we mentioned our basic philosophy on skin creation is to not let the original creator design the skin. We will now think it is inefficient to put the chain on the creative mind. I would like to fix this direction. Well, for a lot of people who don't understand what we're talking about here is certain players usually had the same person design their EE a little bit later. But when you had people who were designing EEs who stopped designing for soccer spirits, you just couldn't get the EE. And this has been a problem for a lot of players to get EE. Uh, one of the major examples, so I know the community is going to go crazy about, would be Miho, who still doesn't have her EE. Who I've got to admit, you can nerf her in the EE like Milky Way, but just give her an EE. This is starting to get sad. Uh, end notes, uh, nothing really of value. They're just saying chill, shit is chill. Uh, I'm going to say the only issue I have with this is they're calling this update Galaxy Live. So does that mean it's going to be live matches? Because as much as I like the idea of live matches between my friends, does that mean, once again, managers are not going to work? Are they going to pull that shit off again? Chains don't work? I mean, it's, it's already been very frustrating to be facing the system. And on top of it, is this going to make Galaxy even longer? Imagine fighting in a live match an army of Monolite survival metas with the Latios Gibral trash. I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting to see what it means, but I really am not inspired by the name of this update. And hopefully it is not what I think, because I can see some people just, when they feel they've lost, not move and try to take up as much time as possible, just hoping that you DC before they do. Who, let's be honest, those servers are not stable. Or at least in my case, I've had some bad experiences with them. So I'm, I'm hoping this is, this is wrong. Attacker buff, a good idea. COD changes, a good idea. COD is a great idea. Unique changes, good idea. This is, this is the literal definition of pay to win right here. So I'm not, I'm not even going to talk about it. I mean, I guess. It, it's still, it depends what the reward is. It, it does sound kind of bullshitty. And, well, we don't know anything about the E, so I, I can't say anything. I hope she becomes viable and she doesn't become broken. The, the usual gig between the two of them. So have a good day, guys, and you're going to find the link in the description.